Okay, cool. I think we have quorum. So, uh, uh, Boa Tarje, will I get that right? Uh, welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Michelle Brunich. I am head of marketing at Deep Vents, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you today's topic and today's speakers. If you're here for the webinar, Runtime Security Observability for Cloud Native Workloads, you are in the right spot. Uh, we are recording this webinar so that we can provide you with the playback for you to have uh, in your records to play on demand. And with that, um, I'd like to go ahead and let you know about today's speakers. Uh, I'm Michelle. I introduce myself and with me today I have Matt Kreshak also from Deep Fence and Silne and Pedro from Interact IA. And to get to today's agenda, uh, we're going to kick off. We're in the kick out, kick off uh, part of the agenda right now. Then I'll pass it over to Silne and Pedro from Interact IA, and they will provide to you an, an overview of, um, you know, their business and uh, how they can help their customers. And that will be presented in Portuguese. And then we will pass the, uh, the microphone over to Matt, who will present a deep fence overview and a live demo. And that portion of this webinar will be in English. And then we will answer your questions um, in both English and Portuguese until the conclusion of the webinar. So with that, it's my pleasure to hand it over to the team at Interact. Okay. Boa tarde, pessoal. Obrigado aí pela participação. Obrigado, Michel, pela apresentação inicial. É, vamos falar aqui um pouquinho hoje sobre a Interact, sobre a Deep Fence, sobre soluções de segurança e inteligência artificial. Uh, meu nome é Silnei Cravasco, sou o CEO da empresa. O Pedro Pereira é o CTO. Nós vamos estar falando um pouquinho mais aqui sobre as soluções no nosso, no nosso portfólio. Por favor, Michel, next. Bom, quem nós somos? A Interact IA, né? IA vem de inteligência artificial, né? nós, nós, nós nascemos o ano passado, uh, um sonho de, de, de dois uh, profissionais da área de TI uh, que, que desejavam uh, prover para os nossos clientes um, algo um pouco mais inovador, uh, eu venho do mundo de data center e desenvolvimento de novos negócios, fiquei 30 anos na planos informática, o Pedro Pereira, ele veio uh, da área também de data center, trabalhou muitos anos na, na Sky, ou seja, a gente está juntando a parte técnica com a parte comercial e buscando empresas que tenham soluções de cyber security alinhada a artificial intelligence, uh, para que a gente possa trazer aqui para o Brasil, como é o caso da Deep Fence, uh, onde a gente pode estar tá provendo esse pessoas com uma especialização muito grande. Quer dizer, esse é o nosso foco, a empresa está focada nessas soluções e nesse conhecimento. Nós estamos aqui localizado em Barueri, próximo aqui à Alameda Araguaia e a Rio Negro, uh, e nossa missão é realmente prover para os nossos clientes soluções inovadoras, como já disse, de inteligência artificial e também de cibersegurança. Ok? Next. Até um pouquinho mais informações sobre inteligência artificial. Aqui vem um dado do IDC. O IDC está falando que cada vez mais as aplicações vão ter soluções embarcadas de inteligência artificial. E a gente vê que até 2025, 90% das aplicações vão ter artificial, artificial intelligence embarcado nas, nas aplicações. Então, cada vez mais nós estamos vendo é, que estão aparecendo soluções que trazem essa inovação e nosso objetivo, como eu já repeti, é trazer, prover isso aos nossos clientes. Next. São soluções, como a gente diz, que podem transformar o seu negócio. Esse é o nosso realmente objetivo, é trazer um valor agregado uh, ao negócio, a aplicações ou a própria, aos negócios do cliente que façam as diferenças. Next. Aqui um pouquinho do nosso portfólio, né? a gente trabalha com soluções de, de, de segurança em cloud, uh, a gente também está com um portfólio de identidade digital, uh, no próximo webinar a gente vai estar tá falando um pouquinho sobre isso, também a identidade digital com inteligência artificial e hoje nós vamos ver nossa, a, a nossa solução de cyber security, 
é, que é da solução da Deep Fence. A Deep Fence é uma empresa que foi fundada em 2016 nos Estados Unidos por um, por um grupo de indianos que desenvolveram essa, que essa solução. E o importante é que ele, a Deep Fence recebeu um aporte o ano passado, final do ano passado, de um fundo, o Fundo Allergy, é um fundo que investe somente em empresas disruptivas e que traz muita inovação. Né? Então, eles foram classificados como empresas que têm uma solução diferenciada a ponto de receber esse aporte. Isso mostra que é uma solução é, que realmente tem um alto valor agregado, principalmente com inteligência artificial, principalmente no nível de segurança. E nós vamos ter a oportunidade de conhecer um pouco mais hoje Uh, nas próximas nos próximos me, nas próximas meia hora tá? para falar um pouquinho mais da Deep Fence vou passar aqui a palavra para o Pedro Pedro Pereira que é o nosso CTO que vai em português dar um, uma prévia do que é essa solução explicar um pouco melhor para vocês depois a gente na sequência vamos ver uma demonstração uh, que vai ser apresentada pelo pessoal da Deep Fence obrigado gente Pedro com você Aqui. Olá pessoal, uma boa tarde, obrigado aí por todos. Eu vou só, assim, eu sou o Pedro, eu vou falar um pouquinho de Deepfence antes do pessoal da Deepfence entrar, para ficar assim um pouco mais claro do que a gente está falando. Então, assim, Deepfence é uma solução de segurança, e é uma solução totalmente diferente do que vocês estão acostumados, tá? Ela é disruptiva, ela é inovadora e ela é complementar as soluções que vocês têm atualmente. O falho de borda, o antivírus IPS, as proteções de perímetro que vocês têm. Então, a solução, ela, ela junta inteligência artificial que monitora as aplicações data center, tanto data center tradicional como data center híbrido. Tá? Para trazer valor para o negócio. Tá? Todo o sistema ele é integrado com uma central global. Essa central global ela recebe as ameaças, recebe informações de todas as outras centrais e a gente consegue mitigar de forma rápida, de forma global, qualquer problema que a gente venha detectar. Então, se tem uma ameaça no outro lado do planeta, você vai receber aquela, aquela informação que aquilo também é uma ameaça para você. Né? É um sistema integrado. Tá? A solução é simples, é interativa, ela funciona ao vivo. Então, muitas empresas mal sabem como é que é a topologia dela ao vivo de aplicação de rede. Então, a ferramenta, ela mapeia isso e mostra ao vivo para você. É bem bacana. É um alívio para o time de, de aplicação, é um alívio para o time de segurança. É, assim, um apoio para o time de desenvolvimento, porque a gente consegue mostrar erros nas aplicações. E isso tudo em tempo real. Não dá tempo, às vezes, de corrigir em dev, não precisa esperar promover para produção, né? Ah, ele atua para detectar problema em arquivos, detectar processos e configurações erradas na rede até. Então, assim, a gente consegue auditora, fazer auditoria, inspecionar os containers e, de uma forma profunda, ver o tráfego de rede como um todo. Tá? Toda a parte de comportamento do aplicativo para correlacionar eventos suspeitos com inteligência artificial e com algo inovador. Tá? É... Dessa forma, toda global, a gente consegue detectar e minimizar falso positivo. A ferramenta ela trabalha dessa forma. É, Michel, next. Uh, esse era o slide. Next again, Michel. Sorry. Isso. Além disso, a Interact tem outros serviços. Então, assim, complementando esse portfólio, a gente também faz a parte de serviços, de arquitetura, a parte de pen test, análise de segurança. A gente tem um portfólio grande de serviços. Hoje não é o foco a gente falar disso, é o foco a gente falar de DeepFence. Então, eu queria dar um overview para vocês terem uma ideia do que, que o DeepFence faz, o que, que ele pode agregar no negócio de vocês. Eu vou passar agora para o pessoal da DeepFence para mostrar o, 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 a ferramenta funcionando. O Michel, Max. Esses são, são os nossos contatos. A gente está aqui em Alphaville à disposição. A gente vai ter um espaço depois para conversar. Tá? Uh, Michelle, you can, you can go with Matt, ok? Thanks, Pedro. Let me go ahead and share my screen. 
Before I begin the demo, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Matt Kreshak and I help lead the pre-sales and customer success teams here at Defense. The core of the Defense platform revolves around three pillars. I like to use the acronym AIP to describe these pillars. A stands for analyze or being able to understand your known attack surface across all of your infrastructure. This not only entails being able to identify what is in your infrastructure, whether it's a host, pod, or container, but also determine where vulnerabilities and weaknesses exist through vulnerability scanning and where misconfigurations and improper settings could leave your infrastructure vulnerable to exploitation. I stands for identify or being able to recognize in real time when an exploit or suspicious activity is occurring in your infrastructure and being able to send out alerts based on the risk. P stands for protect or being able to automatically safeguard your infrastructure when an exploit or malicious activity has been detected. From left to right, CI through CD, Defense provides full lifecycle security observability and protection for your cloud native workloads. Let's take a deeper look into the analyze part of AIP or understanding your known attack surface. This can be broken down into two distinct parts. The first part is being able to see across your complete infrastructure, making sure there are no gaps of visibility where exploits can lurk and take advantage of little to no coverage. As organizations expand beyond existing on-prem data centers and adopt hybrid and or multi-cloud architectures, it can be difficult to maintain a sufficient level of visibility spread over multiple cloud environments. Disparate tooling in each cloud environment not only leads to tool sprawl, but also increases the complexity and operational effectiveness of hybrid and multi-cloud architectures. To solve this challenge, Defense was built from the ground up to see across multiple cloud boundaries and work across multiple cloud modalities. As an example, you could be running a GKE cluster in Google Cloud, virtual machines in Azure, bare metal servers in an on-prem environment, or be leveraging serverless technologies like AWS Fargate. Defense can not only see across these cloud boundaries, but can also work across the various types of infrastructure, including Kubernetes, virtual machines, serverless, and bare metal. Switching to the Defense console, the topology view is the first screen you're presented with after you log in. What you see is a 10,000 foot view of your infrastructure inventory, visualizing both nodes and connections, but also your cloud specific assets, such as an AWS S3 bucket, load balancer, or managed service like Cloud SQL. Defense also provides visualizations for the most popular third-party endpoints, including GitHub, GitLab, Cloudflare, and many others. The information that is presented can be visualized in many ways. The default topology view is by hosts, but this can also be visualized as Kubernetes clusters, containers, all the way down to the individual processes that are running in both graph and table view. We are able to view detailed information about the infrastructure at the micro level by zooming into a host, pod, or container. Here we can view metadata, including information about the operating system, network interfaces, public and private IPs, and the information about the cloud provider if the node is hosted in a public cloud environment. We are also able to view resource availability, active inbound and outbound connections, running pods and containers if using Kubernetes or a container runtime, and the processes that are running on the host, pod, or container, including PIDs and CPU and memory utilization. The Defense platform collects, maps, and visualizes data by deploying a centralized console and a series of sensors across the environments where your workloads are deployed. The Defense console itself can be deployed on a single host running Docker or an isolated three-node Kubernetes cluster depending on the scale and size of your infrastructure. Defense is not a SaaS solution, and the platform is hosted entirely in your own infrastructure. At no time does data ever leave your control, nor does Defense have access to any customer data. I'll talk more about the sensors and deployment models when I present the Identify section of AIP or the Defense Runtime. The sensors operate by initiating a bi-directional communications channel with the Defense Console, or in other words, checks in with the Defense Console. By doing so, this allows you to automate zero-touch provisioning of the defense sensors when you scale out and scale in your infrastructure. You don't have to worry about leaving gaps in your protection by forgetting to kick off manual deployment processes. Now that we have a complete view of the infrastructure, the second part of Analyze and AIP 
is to determine where vulnerabilities, weaknesses, and misconfigurations exist in your infrastructure and workloads. This is all about vulnerability and compliance scanning. The defense platform pulls in threat intelligence feeds from 50 plus different sources, including the National Vulnerability Database, MITRE, Red Hat, GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket, to name a few. By default, Defense will scan for vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the packages and dependencies within the host or container operating system. Defense also extends vulnerability scanning to language-specific application stacks such as Java, JavaScript, Node.js, and Python. Scanning can be targeted at individual hosts, across all hosts and pods in a Kubernetes cluster, or specific container images spanning the entire infrastructure. As your infrastructure grows and the number of workloads increases, it's entirely possible that you could have hundreds, if not thousands of unique vulnerabilities floating around in your infrastructure. Some of these vulnerabilities you can ignore and others can be fixed later, but the question then becomes, how do I identify which vulnerabilities will hurt me the most right now? Or how do I bubble up to the surface and identify the vulnerabilities I should really be concerned about? Defense provides this information in a most exploitable vulnerabilities list. Think of this list as a top 10 list of the most exploitable vulnerabilities that can hurt you the most right this second. In this list of top vulnerabilities, notice there is a score. This is a dynamic score that is calculated by defense and takes into consideration not only the CVSS score provided by the threat intelligence feeds, but also the runtime signals being collected by the defense sensors. The score is continually readjusted based on the perceived exploitability after analyzing the runtime signals. While vulnerability scanning looks for known CVEs and weaknesses, compliance scanning is all about identifying misconfigurations in your infrastructure. This can be something as simple as detecting a password policy violation to something more complex like a set of controls governing package management, configuration parameters, and user permissions. Defense can run compliance scans for system hardening in CIS, NIST for Kubernetes, and PCI DSS and HIPAA in environments where it's applicable. The compliance controls for each type of compliance scan can be adjusted individually based on your organization's specific requirements. Not every compliance control may be applicable to your specific environment and can be disabled or enabled as required. Once a compliance scan has been completed, a summary report can be generated detailing the status of each control that was checked. The defense platform was built with an API-first approach. Everything that you've seen so far in the Defense Console has a corresponding REST API. This makes it incredibly easy to integrate Defense into your existing CI-CD pipelines and development workflows to accomplish tasks like auto-initiated vulnerability scanning, compliance automation, and auto-generation of reports. In the next section, where I talk about the Defense runtime, you'll see how Defense uses the data collected during vulnerability scanning, along with the misconfigurations, and correlates this with the runtime signals collected from the defense sensors in real time. The I for identify in AIP is all about being able to detect when exploits and malicious activities are occurring within your infrastructure in real time. This is handled by the defense runtime that uses the sensors deployed in your infrastructure to collect various runtime signals. The defense sensors deployed across your infrastructure are designed to be small, lightweight in terms of resource consumption, and application agnostic. That is, we don't expect or want application developers to have to modify their code to accommodate Defense. The Defense sensor is a self-contained binary that can be deployed in practically any environment with ease. It inspects five different runtime signals to look for indicators of compromise. These signals are network monitoring, covering both shallow and out-of-band deep packet inspection from layers three through seven, including full decryption of TLS without compromising perfect forward secrecy or requiring certificate management like a proxy-based solution. The decryption and analysis of network flows is completed out of band at the defense console. This is done not only to keep the defense sensor footprint as small as possible, but to also eliminate any obstructions in your application's fast data path. Proxy-based solutions are inline and only serve to add latency and complexity where it doesn't need to exist. The other signals are file integrity, process integrity, system call, and resource monitoring.
These are the primary vectors through which an exploit will try to infiltrate your infrastructure and then perform malicious activity. By inspecting the runtime signals in real time, Defense is not only able to detect known exploits through rules-based matching, but it can also detect zero-day based attacks by looking for the indicators of compromise or the artifacts of an exploit as it weaves its way through your infrastructure. This is a key area where sensor or agent-based solutions like Defense distinguish themselves over agent-less solutions. Real-time detection through sensors versus delayed or even non-existent detection through log analysis or snapshotting. The Defense sensors use eBPF or Extended Berkeley Packet Filtering for runtime detection. By using eBPF, the sensor can reside in Linux user space while gaining the advantages of sitting in Linux kernel space without having to be a kernel module. Hooks and probes are set in kernel space so that the Defense sensor has full visibility into the host and everything that runs on top of it. Essentially, the sensor can see what goes in, what comes out, and what changes full, complete observability. Deep fence sensors are designed to be easily installed and can work across many different types of infrastructure, including serverless ecosystems like AWS Fargate and environments where access to the underlying host infrastructure is severely limited or completely blocked. In a bare metal, virtual machine, or container runtime environment, the deep fence sensor is typically deployed as a single container or a system D binary on the host. In Kubernetes, the Defense sensor is deployed as a daemon set or just another pod that runs on each worker node. In a serverless environment where Defense does not have access to the underlying host infrastructure, the sensor is deployed as a sidecar container to the existing containers or tasks. The runtime signals that are collected by the sensors are continuously fed through the Defense correlation engine where they are combined with vulnerability scan and misconfiguration data using machine learning. The purpose of the correlation engine is to not only notify a user when an exploit or suspicious activity is occurring within their infrastructure, but to also build a visualization of the events that are taking place over both space and time, and to correlate the events with the known vulnerabilities and weaknesses. To demonstrate the defense runtime and correlation, I'm going to run a live attack against Apache struts by exploiting vulnerable code in the Jakarta multipart parser. This will allow for remote code execution by injecting Object Graph Navigation Library, or OGNL, expressions into the content type header of an HTTP request. This attack uses the same exploit that caused the Equifax data breach. However, unlike the Equifax exploit where the attackers infiltrated the infrastructure, then lay dormant for a few days before starting to exfiltrate data, this demo runs on a compressed timescale due to time restrictions, but has the same end result. I'll break down the exploit piece by piece, showing how Defense can detect not only exploits through rules-based detection, but also detect zero-day attacks by looking for indicators of compromise or the artifacts of an exploit, giving you complete coverage. In the last part of the demo, I'll demonstrate how you can create protection policies to automatically protect your infrastructure based on the alerts that are generated from the runtime detection. Let me go ahead and start the exploit. While this is running, I want to quickly show the integration I have set up with Slack. I've set up Defense to immediately notify a designated Slack channel when high or critical severity alerts are detected. Defense also supports other output channels for notifications, including a generic HTTP endpoint. We can now see alerts appearing in the Slack channel. As we can see on the alerts page, Alerts are starting to trickle in as they initially pass through the correlation engine. Let's begin to break this down. We start with the initial HTTP request that contained the OGNL expressions injected into the content type header. Because Defense can do full deep packet inspection from layers 3 through 7, we're able to see what was in the request payload. If we look closer at the content type header value, we can clearly see this is not your typical content type value. We can even see the commands that are being sent across the wire to be executed remotely. OGNL expression injection is a key indicator of an Apache struts attack, and this attack vector was detected through rules-based detection methods. At the bottom we have a correlation chart. The purpose of this chart is to show causality. On the left side of the chart we have the cause, in this case the CVEs that were detected during vulnerability scanning, 
and on the right side we have the effect, which is the attack or exploit with a designated classification. Moving from right to left, the chart shows us that this attack was classified as web-specific apps or an attack specifically targeting a web app like Apache Struts. The runtime detection was through network monitoring using deep packet inspection, and it was inbound from an external client and marked with high severity. The CVEs on the left side of the chart have been identified as possible root causes of the exploit after passing through the correlation engine, and these are the CVEs you would want to address to mitigate risk of further attacks. One of the CVEs that is listed is CVE 20175368, which also happens to be identified in the alert summary. Of course, exploits these days are no longer simple one-vector attacks, and they often occur over both space and time. As we continue to step through the exploit, we'll see the correlation chart change to reflect the events happening over time. The first remote command that the exploit ran was to check the user who was running the Apache Struts process. In this case, it was the root user. The alert we received informed us that the ID check returned the root user indicating suspicious activity. We also received an alert indicating that the output of the ID command was included in the HTTP response back to the client. Both alerts were added to the correlation chart, continuing to build the attack story over time. The exploit also created a file called pwnd.bin in the temp directory. Not only was this file created, it was also modified to include executable code. This was detected through the file integrity monitoring of the defense sensor in real time. As an example, this could have easily been an artifact of a zero-day attack where the exploit itself has not yet been identified but has left a trail of evidence indicating an exploit is active. Notice the correlation chart now includes a file anomaly as the exploit continues to progress and we continue to map out the events. The next remote command in the exploit is to run the executable code in the temp file. The defense runtime detects that a user ran the strace command, which was detected through system call monitoring, and shortly thereafter a core dump was observed through process integrity monitoring. Both events are artifacts of an exploit and aid in the ability to observe and detect zero-day attacks. The last two events created by the attack involve data exfiltration. The first is a remote curl execution, creating an information leak to a third-party endpoint with a known bad IP reputation. Since defense can do full deep packet inspection, we can see the request payload includes the contents of the Etsy passwd file containing sensitive information. The second data exfiltration is sent back to the original client and the response payload contains information about the current user, a listing of the current directory, the output of an strace, and the contents of both the Etsy passwd and Etsy shadow files. Both data exfiltration events were detected through network monitoring. The correlation chart has been updated to reflect an outbound request to an external endpoint. Now that we can observe and correlate exploits and indicators of compromise in real time, we can move on to the last pillar of AIP, which is P for protect. This is all about automated protection of your infrastructure when user designated triggers and thresholds have been observed and exceeded. Defense can apply two different methodologies when it comes to workload protection. The first method, referred to as quarantine policies, is a modern approach built specifically for cloud native applications. It deals with the workloads directly instead of applying traditional network-based security policies like cutting off network access or blocking bad actors. In a Kubernetes environment, you can choose to delete a pod, or in a container environment, you can choose to stop, restart, or pause a running container. This allows defense to be laser-focused on how it quarantines or expunges exploits that are active in your infrastructure. Let's walk through an example quarantine policy that will activate when an Apache Struts exploit is detected. I set the quarantine policy to activate when an alert of high severity is detected and the class type is web specific apps, which is applicable to web apps like Apache Struts. If I receive one alert that matches this set of criteria, I want the pod to be deleted. I'll set a watch on the Apache Struts pods running in my Kubernetes cluster and run the exploit again now that I've created a quarantine policy.
Notice that one of the pods was terminated and then recreated. By deleting the pod, we removed any artifacts that were created by the exploit while at the same time stopped the exploit from manifesting itself through potential lateral spread. Kubernetes will automatically recreate the pod based on the required number of replicas. The net result is that instead of taking down the entire service by cutting the network pipe, Defense can target the specific pod where the exploit is actively running and remove it from the cluster without affecting the other pods in the service. The second method that Defense can apply to protect your infrastructure is the traditional network-based approach by blocking bad actors. The criteria to trigger the network policy is very similar to the quarantine policy. The only real difference is that instead of acting on the application itself, we're simply going to block the bad actor's IP address for a user-specified amount of time or indefinitely. That's the end of the demo, and I want to take a quick moment to summarize what I've discussed today. There are dozens of products and open source projects that address different aspects of the security of your applications and how they are secured at runtime. Most of them are point solutions. They are very good at doing what they do, but it's up to you to piece together the information from each and build a bigger picture about what is going on. This is where Defense is unique. It combines two types of solutions, vulnerability scanning and runtime monitoring, and meshes the two together. This allows Defense to give you much better informed insights and to properly prioritize what to look at. For example, the vulnerability scanner might detect that a component in your application could be exploited by a local escalation attack someone would need local access to mount the attack. On the other hand, the vulnerability scanner might detect that another component in your application is vulnerable to a network attack, such as Apache struts. Furthermore, it might determine that this component is at the edge of your infrastructure and processes traffic directly from the internet. That's a much bigger risk. Defense builds a map of the vulnerabilities and scores them based on the risk so you know what to prioritize. The runtime monitoring is where things get even more clever. Defense can detect if someone has sent a known Apache Struts exploit to the vulnerable component. It can detect when suspicious activities are happening on the application or in your infrastructure, such as a process crash or unexpected file modification. Defense puts all the signals together and alerts you if he thinks that an attack is occurring in real time. It can also quarantine expunge or block additional activity once an attack or exploit has been identified. Defense is a unique platform that gives you full lifecycle security observability and protection across your entire infrastructure. Over to you now, Michelle, for some Q&A. Okay. Thank you very much for that demonstration. That was awesome. We do have a couple questions coming in the Q&A box, um, which for those of you who might be new to Zoom is on the bottom of your screen. And with that, um, I will go ahead and ask the very first question, which is, how can I test the solution in my environment and how long can I use it to test? Is it 30 days? Defense does offer trials of the platform with a standard trial period of 15 days. This can be extended, of course, to complete complex POCs, but a typical prospect can complete a trial in 15 days or less. The installation of Defense is very easy and straightforward to complete, and we're often able to get everything up and running in 30 minutes or less if the infrastructure is already in place. Okay, uh, we have another question here. Does Defense work on all public and private clouds? Defense does work across all public and private clouds with a few variations on how the protection policies will work on the non-major public cloud providers. Okay, great. We have um, time for more questions. If those of you who haven't asked a question would like to, um, please do that. And while those may or may not be coming in, um, Silne or Matt, any, any wrap up comments for our virtual audience today? Yes, uh, I, I will speak in Portuguese. Pessoal, é, essa foi uma apresentação, obviamente, que tem a questão da, da língua, que pode ter alguns detalhes. A gente fica à disposição para poder fazer uma apresentação individual para vocês. Como foi perguntado a questão é, de demo, 
o interessante é que seja feito um POC, né, para que veja no seu ambiente como que funciona, uma demonstração é mais para a gente poder dar uma, uma visão geral, mas o, o grande, o, a grande oportunidade de a gente conseguir ver o que realmente o produto faz no seu ambiente é fazer uma POC, um POC, é, onde a gente, como já foi falado, é, é muito simples de, de ser instalado e a partir do momento que você instala, você vai realmente poder ver os benefícios, ver o que, que o software consegue te dar de informações, e as demos são por, por 30 dias, a gente pode assistir é, vocês na, na demo é, a qualquer momento, então a gente fica aqui à disposição, mais uma vez eu agradeço aí a oportunidade de a gente estar aqui explicando um pouquinho mais sobre a Interact, sobre a DeepFence e sobre essas soluções. Então, eu gostaria de agradecer aí a presença de todos. Ok, okay. Uh, Michel. Michel, se if you we don't have another questions, we can finish. Yeah, I don't see any new questions coming in. We've addressed the two that have um, been asked. So um, with that, if we want to go ahead and um, wrap up, we can. OK, pessoal, obrigado a todos. Queria agradecer ao time da DeepFence. Thank you all, Matt, Michel, Jazz. Uh, agradecer a audiência de vocês. Uh, a gente está uh, aqui à disposição. Uh, thank you all. Um, e um bom final de dia. Obrigado. Ok, obrigado. Thank you. Thank you. Deep fast team. Thank you as well, Interact team. Ok, with that, okay. close today's webinar. Thanks, everybody. Ok. Bye bye.